today. <laughs> How you doing? Thanks for thanks for coming here. Um, you know, we're just excited to get the get the season started. Uh, really excited for the official practices that actually started last week. Um, I thought there was excitement surrounding it. I thought we had great energy. Uh, guys are playing with great aggressiveness right now. Um, you know, we're, we're up and down a little bit, uh, probably from day to day, and even practice to practice uh, as we get started because we're just trying to implement so much. Uh, in regards to our philosophy, our style of play, uh, but the guy's been giving an honest effort and working really hard right now. Things are a little fragile. We got to stay extremely healthy uh, this year to to help us achieve some of our goals. Um, but the guys, again, the guys are working pretty hard. How do you think the guys are uh, adjusting to your system after the coaching change? Uh, I think they're doing pretty well with it. It's going to take some time. Um, like I said, I think the. I break it down into days off, we'll consider weeks. So we went, I think we had five practices in four days last week. Uh, and I thought it was at a high level intensity. We threw a lot at them. Uh, I thought they picked up a lot of the stuff pretty well. Uh, since we've come back off that first day off, which was on Tuesday, um, we're kind of coming at them with a whole other wave of stuff right now. And I think it's, it's maybe a little bit too much. So I think we've been a little bit inconsistent this week compared to last week. You what did you, sorry, you mentioned your goals. I mean, at this point, what are they for the season? Well, you know, our goals right now are, are the goals every year are to compete for a championship. I mean, if you're not going to do that, then you know, I think we're in the wrong business. Uh, I think our short-term goals right now are to get better every day. And I think we've, you know, even in practices, we've, you know, take two steps forward, one step back one step forward, two steps back. So we have to get consistent first. Uh, but the goals uh, are to be a tough physical team, uh, to out-rebound our opponents, which was an issue last year, uh, and then again, com to compete to put ourselves in a position to compete for the championship. But short-term goals, it's about getting better every day, being consistent, um, and being tougher. And those are the things we're working on right now. Now that you've got to actually work with the guys, what do you like most about your roster? Your new roster here? Well, you know what I do like about it as a coach is that it is young. And I know uh, most of the time you want experience, uh, which I do, believe me, but it brings you back to your roots of coaching, the true essence of coaching. It's a young team. It's a really young team. You know, besides uh, Sean Johnson and Andre Marhold, there's not a lot of game experience in this gym at all. Um, so it's, we're almost treating everybody like a freshman. Um, so it's at the purest stage, and we're, we're starting with basic passing drills and pivoting drills and cutting drills. So I think as a, as a coaching staff, it's very exciting to us. Um, but, you know, we, we do have some athleticism. We do have some quickness, uh, and we're trying to play to those strengths right now. Those freshmen that are coming in, who, has anyone stuck out to you that is going to – because obviously they're going to have to get some playing time. Yeah, they are. Who, who stuck out to you that might get the majority of that? Ah, you know what, they've all, they've all done a pretty good job. I think they all bring some, some pieces that are some major positives. You know, the um, – Derek Coulter has been playing really well, great speed, aggressiveness, but he makes some fresh mistakes at times. I think Marvin Binney as well. They're, they're different from each other as point guards, but we're going to need both of them as a two-headed monster uh, throughout the year. Quevin Winters uh, you know, has the ability to put the ball in the basket. I think they all just need to slow down a little bit. Uh, Jeremiah Jones has actually had a very good second week. I think first week kind of taking everything in. Um, but this second week where he started, I think he's, he's making some strides. He's doing a pretty good job. So I think we're excited about all of them. Uh, uh, I've heard me say this word quite a bit, patience. We're going to need to have a lot of patience with those freshmen because they're going to be put into the fire. They're going to have to make plays, but they're also going to make a lot of mistakes. We've got to teach them how to deal with those mistakes as we're playing in games. So it's a little bit, a little bit different than maybe a normal year. Um, you, okay. you guys were ranked last in the preseason poll. How did that affect your game plan coming into practice? It hasn't, didn't affect it, not one bit. You know. I never really pay attention to that stuff. I know that's a coach's rhetoric, I guess, but I've been picked first and I've been picked last. I never paid attention to that stuff that really, we just focus on what we can control and that's trying to get better every day. And I you know, haven't really even addressed it as a team. We will, because why not stick it on a board and use it for some personal motivation? But at this stage in the game, it's really not that important. You talked about the youth and uh, how they'll have to step up, especially now that uh, BJ Montero, Eric Evans graduated, TJ McConnell transferred. Um, do you think like maybe guys like Jerry Jones who showed flashes uh, last year will kind of need to step forward and you know kind of be more consistent throughout the season? He's going to need to, yeah. you know, for us to be able to compete in this league. I mean, this league's a monster, and, and I think you know those guys that we lost, um, those are some really good players. 
Oh, really good players, you know, and what's happening is you're trying to replace them with guys that haven't played much. Uh, that's a difficult thing to do, but Jerry has the potential to be a very good Atlantic 10 player, and he's shown that at times. I think he needs to take on that responsibility, which he is, um, and he's going to need to improve significantly throughout the year. Uh, but he's had some real bright spots. He's got great energy level. He's got great body. His length. He plays really hard. Um, his shooting has been a little bit up and down, but he can shoot the basketball. But guys like you know Jerry Jones and Andre Marhold and even Sean, like those guys have to lead this team. You know, they, they have some experience. Kadeem, he's another one that has to take responsibility. He's got some playing time under his belt. Uh, but these guys have to take that on as these younger guys develop. Is this, um, is this the same blueprint you more or less used at LIU? Obviously that worked or has been adjusted and tweaked a little bit based on your experience there? Yeah, I think both. Both. It's, I'm certainly following the same uh, print, the same general idea. Um, because it very very similar circumstances. Uh, obviously, this is a different league and a, a much more challenging league. But you got to have patience. I think I'm a little bit uh, more experienced with rebuilding, a little bit more mature. Obviously, you can tell by the gray hairs uh, comes along with it. Um, so when I was a little bit younger, taking over that team, I think I got a little bit more frustrated early when things weren't going right. Where I think my poise and maturity of understanding that you know, as long as we're getting better. Um, you know, we're not going to hit a home run every time we hit the court. So we just make sure we got to get better so that we're really playing good basketball at the end of the year and also that we're making the right strides and building a program. You know, we can't lose fact of what we're trying to do here. It's not just trying to build one team for one year. It's trying to build a program. And that, that takes a while, and that has to have some patience, and we have to do it the right way, and that's really what we're focusing on. You talked about the, the conferences in general. What do you think of the additions of VCU and Butler? It's obviously a big addition on the headset. Yeah, I think it's great for our conference. I think it's great when you bring in two quality institutions with great basketball programs, great you know tradition, at least you know recent tradition. Uh, it makes our conference one of the top basketball conferences in this country, and I think that's great for Duquesne. I think it's great for us. We want to be in this. Um, we just got work to do to be able to compete with those guys right now. Um, but I think it's great, and moving forward, I think it's going to be tremendous. I think it's going to help us attract a higher maybe a higher level player than maybe we've been able to attract in the past uh, because the conference is that much better. But it's going to be really challenging, uh, especially this year. <laughs> you left a pretty full cupboard at LIU. I think you're picked number one again. Yeah. Does that matter when, when a coach leaves a program to, to know that he left in pretty good shape? Or it, you know, it, it did to me um, just in the fact that I, I took a program over that was, it was devastating. It was probably one of the worst jobs in America when I took it over. I had several colleagues tell me not to take it. You can't win there. Um, and what I thought was special is, you know, it wasn't just a one-hit wonder. We didn't just win it one year and then move on, or win it one year and then ha go back to scratch and start all over again. You know, w it took us some time to build it. By year three, we we're in a conference semifinals, and when you can get that in year three, you've rebuilt it. And then we became one of the top. You know, we became one of the top half of the league consistently for the past four, five, six years. And then to win championships back to back and also have everybody back again. And then for my assistant coach, who I mentored, to be able to get the job, that was really important to me. It was very special knowing that when I left, it was the program still intact. It's not like someone had to start over. It's, it's at a real high level right now. And when you can say you did that, then obviously I, I felt like I really did do my job there. Um, I didn't just quick fix it and leave. I kind of set it up for the for the future, and I think hopefully they'll be able to continue to have success in the future because they have a great coach, they got some great players, and there's some really good young kids in the fold there too. So, you know, there's days I look back when we have a bad practice, I might go back and say, "Wow, did I really leave all those guys back there? I should have took some of them here." Um, but no, I think it, it that was very very important to me um, to do so, and it was also. It brought me to that stage where I, I think I've said it before. It was going to take something special to pull me away because I had a great program, and we're going to be. They get a chance to win it again, and we had everybody back again, and um, I had a great situation. I just felt like this situation here was a, a, an unbelievable opportunity for me, and my family, come to a great school and a great league, and yes, take on another challenge to do it again. So, um, hopefully, I answered that question. Are you excited or any bit nervous about playing home games at console? Um, yeah, excited, sure. I think it's great. I think it's, uh, you know, just being in Pittsburgh, I haven't been in Pittsburgh that long, but it, you know, being a New York guy, you know, we got two of everything. 
You know, I mean, we got two pro teams, or two, two basketball teams, two hockey teams, two baseball teams, and that's a pro city. Um, but coming here, man, you, you know, you guys get after it. it it's sports are serious, and it's a, so I think for us to have the opportunity to play on a big stage like that uh, at the Consol Arena, I mean, I think that's that's awesome for our school. I think it's great for our conference because we get to present that. Um, you know, St. Louis has a beautiful arena, and Xavier has a beautiful arena, but so don't we. You know, Palumbo, great home court advantage. Then we get to play some games in that environment. I think that's tremendous. So uh, we're real excited about it. Jim, I think when some fans hear the word rebuilding, they hear, they kind of cringe and hear lost season or something like that. What, how would you, I guess, explain what you mean when you say, when you say that and, and how you see that playing out moving forward? Well, it's certainly not a lost season by any means. I mean, it's a, but let's be realistic. <laughs> like, you know, we're, we're starting over a little bit. Whoever was here was starting over. Um, those guys graduated, a couple kids transferred, so you're starting over. So, um, you know, the fans obviously have to have a little bit of patience and understand the situation that they're in. Um, but it's not a lost year by any means. I mean, I think it, as a coach, it's exciting. You get to, to build and see what you're missing and what you need to get done. Um, and again, it's a little bit of a process. And as long as there's a little bit of patience, um, you know, I've done this before. And everywhere I've been, with a little bit of patience, we've over-exceeded expectations of what was supposed to happen. And that was even at Adelphi, places that I've been before. So um, I'm not, we're not in a rush. We're not going to quick fix this. It's not going to happen. Not in a league like this. So we want to make sure we do it the right way and we build a program, not just a, not just a season. And I think everybody's going to be excited in the end result uh, when we reach the goals that we've set for ourselves. Hey, Brendan, Andy at all, please. Well, you've been here, Andy Tool. Andy and I are pretty good friends. We go back, you know, what people don't realize is I recruited Andy at a high school. So I don't look that old, but I guess it's pretty good. I recruited Andy at a high school. Uh, he visited Bentley College when I was an assistant there. And so I've known Andy since he's been about 18 years old. And, um, you know, Andy's got me involved with some things locally, like coaches versus cancer, and, and we speak quite a bit. He's, you know, I think he's a fantastic young coach. Well, let's take the word young out. He's just a fantastic coach. He's doing a, a great job over there, and you know, I'll support him as best I can.